my Kenya land. You are going to your promised land, the Kenya land that God has promised you. Exodus chapter 12, verse 41, and Exodus chapter 13, verse 18. So the Lord led them another way through the desert. Every promised land, every wilderness experience shall lead you into your promised land in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We all know the title that I've been walking to all these three days is possessing the mentality of freedom from Pharaoh. You are no more a slave. You have been bought with a prize. Bible said glorify God in your body. And anything that did not make it to glorify God is keeping you in Egypt. And guess what? God has set you free. You have nothing else to do with Egypt in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The question is, how would you get out? Jesus Christ is the only way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. John chapter 14, verse 6. Go into the war, you will see tribulation. But be of which I have overcome the war. John chapter 16, verse 33. God is the only one that you can be rest assured of. It's inside his assurance that your life is guaranteed. God is the only way. And because God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him with spirit and in truth. So God now say, hey, how can I communicate? How can I bring my freedom package closer to my people? Then the Bible says, he sent his word. And who is the word? Who is the word? The, the word that God sent? Hey, He sent Jesus, and Jesus Christ said, "As my living Father has sent me, and I live by Him, even so sent I you." <coughs> so Jesus succeeded by God. So Jesus gave us the same capacity, and He said, "We will succeed by Him." Somebody shout Hallelujah! Somebody shout Hallelujah! Somebody shout Hallelujah! And if you are here, say, how can you be free indeed? Number one, we said, accept him, as, accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 29. And yesterday, we started the part two of uh, possessing the mentality of freedom from Pharaoh. Uh, Jesus, free indeed through Jesus Christ. And we talked about how you are precious, how you should not be ashamed why? Because Jesus has paid the price. Hey, to him that the Son of God set free is free indeed. John chapter 8, verse 36. How you have been rescued from the kingdom of the darkness to so his kingdom of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. How he, he, he redeemed you by being, being nailed to the cross. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed you from the cause of the law. Being made a cause for you, for it is written, causes everyone that is hung on the tree, that the blessing. So God, Jesus Christ does not just set you free into, into poverty. He sets you free into abundance. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. That is why Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 say, Hey, I have been crucified in Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lived in me. And the life which I now live, I live in the flesh, but I live in the faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So giving, Jesus Christ does not just die so you go to heaven. Help me to look for that scripture. I think it's uh, Revelation chapter 5. From verse 9 to 10. He said, you have been redeemed as a priest and as a king to reign on earth. Yes. He has made us, you see, kings are the people who are in charge of marketplace. Why the priests are who are in charge in the spiritual world. Somebody shout hallelujah, take your seat. <coughs> so, you are not just a normal person on the street. You are an ambassador of heaven, rescued by the blood of Jesus Christ. Who on, on a mission to make this world a domain for God. Somebody shout hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. He said, but you are a chosen people. You are the king's priest. I'm reading easy to read version. He said, you are only nation. The, the people belong to God. He chose you to tell about the wonderful things he has done. He bought you out of the darkness of sin 
into his wonderful life. Somebody shout hallelujah. And we all know John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus Christ came with one mission. And that one mission is so solid. He said, I've come to give you life. Some, you can substitute it. He has come to set you free. And we said it. He set you free from lack into abundance, from littleness into greatness, from borrowing into giving, from mediocre into extraordinary life, and from failure into success. But it's up to you. To know either you are free indeed or you are not. But Psalm 82 verse, six, verse 5 lets us to know that hey, they knew not what, neither would they understand. He said they, they, they all walk in darkness. Listen, what you're supposed to know that you don't know is not the fault of the person who made it available. That is why they call it discovery or recovery. There will never be a recovery without discovery. So discovery is the mother of recovery. Right? It's very clear. So when you see people that come to the understanding of who they are, it's because they, they have recovered, they have discovered themselves. That's why they can recover everything that has been lost in them. And I said it, that this God said, hey, I have come down. So the freedom that God guarantees us is he came down to say, no, enough is enough. My people, it's time for them to be free. And I declare and I decree upon you that the freedom of God will be visible in your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, accept him. I said the first day, the second day was yesterday, is to follow him. Follow him. Matthew chapter 4 verse 13. He said, follow me and I will make you. Why? If you follow him, how do we follow him? You seek him first. The kingdom of God, Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 6, sorry, verse 33. Today, being the third day, June 9, I'll be walking us through the same topic, possessing the mentality of freedom from Pharaoh. Free indeed through Jesus Christ. Free indeed through Jesus Christ. Open your Bible with me, please, to Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. Genesis chapter 18, verse 14. The Bible said, is in anything too is anything too hard is anything too hard for the lord to do somebody said wrote to me you have been screaming about freedom i told you this is our month of libra liberation is anything too hard for the lord to do when the prophecy came through the the, the, the lord's angel to the family of abraham and what i call it sarah was doubting and the response that came is anything too hard for the Lord to do. Jeremiah 32, verse 17 and verse 27. There is nothing too hard. He said, at the appointed time, I will return. In the mighty name of Jesus. This month is the month of God returning to you. And everything he has promised you will come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Your insensitivity to the present present package will make you to lose woefully. If you don't know what is available, <laughs> you will never retain your dignity. So, as, so, so coming to the full knowledge of your of the availability, it is what makes you to retain your dignity. If you don't know that there's a million dollars, U.S. dollar, in bank for you, you will still be struggling. If you don't know that you can invest 10,000, 1 million dollars, and be taking 10% of 8%, and you don't need to work again for the rest of your life. You, what you don't know, Bishop Bedeko said, you don't know. But the next statement he said, but it's very powerful. He said, but what you don't know, you don't know, number one. But what you cannot learn, you cannot know. There are two, my, let me tell you my secret. Two, two men changed my life. Two men changed my life. Number one, his name was Jim Ron. <clears throat> Jim Ron convert Bible into, into secular teaching. And if you are not a Bible scholar, or if you are not a Bible student, you will not know. There is one thing he said. <clears throat> he said, human being can do so much if there is so much to do. And human being can do so little if there is so little to do. What that means how far you will go in life is directly proportionate to your readiness of doing. And you cannot do until you know him. So
So knowing provoke doing and doing brings your relevance. <clears throat> Anytime you run out of what to do, eh, you lost your dignity. Anytime you run out of project, vision, mission. Anytime you run out of project, anytime you run out of pursuit, you are done. Bishop Boedepo, the second man who changed my life, he said something powerful. He said, <laughs> listen to this. When your tax becomes a must, all your senses will come alive. So, don't tell me you cannot do it. Don't tell me you don't have the capacity for it. Don't tell me you don't have resources for it. Just tell me it is not a must. If your life, somebody shared a story with me a very long time when I was in Nigeria. He said, there is this young man who went to go and meet this sage. He said, sage, <clears throat> I want to be rich like you. I want to be wise like you. One day, two day, come back the third day. Hey, Sage, I want to be rich like you. I want to be you know, known by you, like you. He doesn't listen to him. Seven days, two weeks, three weeks, one month, well, six months, one year. One day because this guy will not give up. And the Sage said, let me show you a secret today. They were walking on the street and they brought into a stream. Once they got into the water, the Sage, they keep going. They keep going. This guy was saying, what is this guy doing? This is water. I don't know how to swim. <coughs> they said, follow me. Do you say you want to know the secret? So you can be famous, so you can be known, so you can have money. He said, hey, as they are walking, the water gets to the ankle. It gets to the, to the, to the, you know, to the half of their body. It gets to their neck. And by the time they're about to get, you know, soak into the water, they said took that man and pulled all this water and all his head in the water, all his body, and throw him to the deepest deep and the sage swim back and left him waited this guy cannot swim he was fighting the water he found himself the person that i've never swim before he swam back to the lake and he got angry he said, no, this is not what I bargained for. I said, you should show me how to be successful. I said, you should show me how to have enough. I said, you should show me how to be respected. And the said told him, he said, you have just discovered the secret. He said, until life becomes do or die, you will never make anything out of it. So whatever you see is a function of do or die. There's a president of Nigeria right now. Of course, everybody know how he got there. But right now, <laughs> he's now calling people. He said, let's settle. After he has gotten this way, this is what I've come to understand. If you allow people to put you aside, eh, you will be aside forever. And when they not get on the way, they will be calling you to come and serve them. And if you don't, they will make you to look like a bad person. Of course, they are the one who started the, the, the wrongdoings. Don't allow people to sideline you. Know your cause and stay there. Everything Bishop Jim Lon said that you need is in the rich. Bishop said, what you don't need, you don't have. Everything you, you have, you need, is in your hand. This freedom the Lord is talking about, Ecclesiastes chapter 20, verse 14, he said, I know whatever the Lord does shall be forever. Nobody can add to it. Nobody can take from it. The Lord does it that people for the, to be fearful. So the freedom God gave you over your marriage, over your children, over your finances, over your health, over your relationship, are all function of the solidity of God. God does not need men to make you. God is a maker of men. God does not consult men to tell, to tell him the kind of men that he's going to raise. Look at how easy to read version puts it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14. He said, I learned that anything God does will continue forever. Settlement. The freedom of God through Christ Jesus will continue for what? Forever. 
The freedom of God over your marriage will continue for what? Forever. The freedom of God over your promotion will continue for what? Forever. You have to know God's freedom is not for a while. It's not for some time. It is unlimited. He continued. He said, people cannot add anything to it. People cannot add anything to the work of God. I prefer, this is the rich version. I love it. He said, and they cannot take anything away from it. He said, God did this so that people will respect him. Right now, begin to command respect. Amen. Right now, begin to command honor. Amen. Anything that is making you to be appear like a slave, anything that is making you to be, to be lowering yourself, and be nothing by the power that is in the name of Jesus and by the anointing of this morning, anointing of liberation, be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Psalm 16, verse 9 to 10. Psalm 16, verse 9 to 10. Look at what the Bible says. It says, Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoice. My flesh also shall rest in hope. What hope? For thou will not leave my soul in hell. God will not leave you in Egypt. God will not leave you borrowing. God will not leave you in hospitals. God will not leave you in divorce. God will not leave you for you for, for, for children to be everywhere. God will not leave you without food on your table. God will not make, leave you without having cloth on your body. God will not leave you without having every necessity on the basic means of life. God will not leave me in, you know, the hope of God is that God will make available every arrangement needed for me. Liberation of freedom. You know, when people don't know the God that they serve, they begin to serve their need forever. If you don't know the God that you serve, your need becomes your God. Your need. Because human beings' needs are insatiable. You cannot run out of need. But in the midst of need, you begin to locate God. You begin to run after God. And that God will set you away from, set you free from need. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you suffer your only one to see corruption. You don't see that? Because, uh, hey, I have a confidence that God will not make this, this little claim to be ashamed. Look at how easy to read puts it. Verse 9 to 10, Psalm 16. He says, So my heart and my soul will be very happy. Even my body will live in safety. Because you will not leave me in the place of death. God will not leave me in the place of slavery. God will not leave me in a position of borrowing. God will not leave me in a place of dismay. God will not leave me in guilt and shame. He will not place me on death. You will not let your faithful one rot in the grave. Somebody say freedom through Christ. Somebody say freedom through Christ. Efficiency. So how do you harness all these things and bring them to our life? How do you leverage on the availability of God's provision and bring solution? Hey, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. He said, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that lives in you. The power I come to tell you today is the power of divine connection around the truth. The truth is that you have, you have, you have been bought with a price. You have been set free. If there is anyone left in Egypt, that person chose to. If there's anyone in Egypt, that person decided to. <laughs> Look at it. John chapter 3, verse 16, very popular that we used to be. John 3, 16, but let's read verse 17 alongside with it so we can make sense of 16. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in his will not perish but have everlasting life. That's all we, we, we chant. That's all we talk about. Look at verse 17. For God sent not his son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, substitute saved for free. 
that through him might be free. Look at easy to read. He said, God sent his son into the world. He did not send him to judge. He did not make it to, you know, in the military. He said, hey, you don't leave any army behind. Any handman, any coast guard, any sailor. You don't leave them behind. There's a group of people that what they do is to rescue. You think they have killed them, let us bury their body. No, they go and rescue the body. Because what happens? Hey. <laughs> the body must not sleep in a foreign land. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. He did not send him to judge the world guilt, to judge the world guilt, but to save the world through him. On that note, let me tell you five things that Jesus Christ set you from, set you free from. We, we talked about some yesterday, but let's talk about five more today. Number one, Jesus sets you free from guilt and shame and give you a blameless life and peace. John chapter 8, verse 11. The woman was in the act. They caught her. They caught her. They caught that woman with adultery. But what they don't do is that they brought the woman, they don't bring the man. <laughs> One person cannot pay adultery by herself. That's why Jesus Christ got to know this is manipulation. What they are trying to do is to put her guilt, the guilt player, and what happened? And to shame her. Jesus Christ said, No! Anyone that have not that without sin be the first person to cast the stone. John chapter 8, verse 11, 10 to 11. John chapter 8, verse 10 to 11. When Jesus had lifted up him, lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are thou your accuser? As no man condemned you, he said, He said, No man, Lord, Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go. And sin no more. Somebody says, set free from guilt and shame. You got to know that. I don't care what you have done wrong. I don't care where you have been that is wrong. I don't care the thoughts in your heart. I don't care the things that you do in the secret place that nobody knows. I don't care the things that you have done. What I come to let you know is this. Jesus closed his eyes to the wrong of that woman. Automatically, he is ready, or he has done it already. You just have to accept it that he has closed his eyes to your wrong. I don't care what is going on in your family. I don't care what is going on in your, fa in your finances. Guilt, shame, regret, reproach, they are no more your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As the woman set that woman in the heart free, so shall you be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus don't only set from guilt and shame. He also sets free from sicknesses and give you good health in replacement of it. In Mark chapter 5, we all know the woman. She has spent all her money with all the profession and all the expertise. Nothing happened. And they posted, the, the, there was a poster. There was a Facebook ad. There was an Instagram ad. There was a Facebook, YouTube ad that Jesus Christ was coming to the town. And the woman was on her Facebook one day and she stumbled. He said, hey, Jesus is coming. And she made up her mind. He said, if only I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made up. By the faith in her, she stepped out. In verse 28 and verse 29, he said, for she said, if I may touch his cloth, I shall be whole. He said, and straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up. Everything that is called sickness, everything I brought pressure, diabetes, no matter or whatever they call it, that the, the enemy has called. They have called and they have called and registered with your name on your body by the power in the freedom that Jesus Christ brought to you today. Be set free from sicknesses in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus sets free from sickness. The Bible never said the woman needs to go back for a checkup. The Bible never said the woman needs to go back <clears throat> and be in that blood. Immediately that she touched his hem, the garment of Jesus, she was made whole. You know, I preach <laughs> this particular message. I call it uh, the transformation of a dangerous woman. <laughs> she was called a woman. And down the line, she was called the woman. But by the time Jesus turned back, 
He said, she will touch me. Jesus never called her a woman. Neither did Jesus call her the woman. Jesus called her daughter. And because a virtue left Jesus, I perceive that woman became the Joyce Mayor of our day. The Funka Dejum of our day. Going everywhere, healing people. Because she don't just be healed. She took the mantle of healing and she now became a healer. Through Jesus Christ. You need to understand that the freedom Jesus Christ brought to you is not a limited freedom. It's an unlimited freedom. He, cre he gave you a franchise of it. Say, go, represent me. Go, make this happen on my behalf. Go, <coughs> execute on my behalf. Go, make this happen. If only you have faith in God, you will know that you don't need to beg again. If only you have faith in God, you will know that that doctor that is telling you you're going to die in three months, in six months, in one month, is not your God. And the verdict of men will always come into adjustment to the verdict of God. Verdict of men must be adjusted to God's verdict. And God's verdict has been sent before the beginning of the earth. He said, you shall live and not die. <laughs> verdict. You shall be above and not beneath. Verdict. You shall learn to nation and don't borrow. Verdict. You are, it says you are the head and not the tail. Verdict. You need to understand. Anytime you take your eyes away from God's verdict, then you will embrace the verdict of men. And because you see men often, because you are scared of their rank, their eyes, their color, you might be thinking they are bigger than God. Listen, write this down. Every creature will respect its creator. Every doctor know the great physician. <laughs> Every lawyer know the great the judge of heaven and earth. So no negative verdict is permitted to find space in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Say with me, Jesus Christ set free from guilt and shame, also set free from sickness. Number three, Jesus sets free from death and gives you life. He sets free from death and gives you life. Lazarus, dead, four days. Stinks, and uh, everything was not, not in the line. And Jesus Christ said, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible, you know, they're supposed to give us no. The, it was straight, it was instant. The Bible said in verse 44, John chapter 11, that he that was dead, 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 he that was, I speak right now, anything dead in your body, receive the life of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. When in Genesis chapter 2, when God created you, God don't just create Adam, Inside Adam is you. Every human because the seed in itself. <laughs> Very powerful statement. So when God created Adam, the, according to the scripture, he said Adam was without form and void. Nothing in him. But the Lord came down and breathed the breath of life. <sighs> Genesis chapter 2 verse, verse 7. He said man became a living being. That is that day that Christ in you, the hope of glory. That no matter what the enemy plan, the, the breath of God will bring you back to life. The breath of God will bring you back to life. The breath of God will bring life back to you. That Lazarus was dead. But the Bible said, he that was dead came back alive. He that was dead came back alive. You need to understand, anything, your marriage, your finances, your network, your connection, your house, and it's your spiritual life, your physical life, your mental capacity life, he that was dead came back alive. So Jesus set free by what? Take away death and replace it with life. Somebody say, that's me. Somebody say, that's me. Somebody say, that's me. So Jesus set free from guilt and shame. He set free from sickness. He set free from death. And number three, and number four, he set free from uh, hunger. Can I show you a scripture? <laughs> Maybe it's 
Solomon that wrote that part or not. But let us go to Proverbs chapter 30 and see something. As a believer, if you don't have money to feed, it's not good. Verse 7. Two things I have required of thee, deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Look at verse 9, everybody. He said, less. I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or less. I will be poor and steal. Anyone who don't have money to feed will steal. And stealing <laughs> is an agent from the kingdom of darkness that brings shame. Because God did not want to shame you. God must provide for you. Someone say freedom. freedom. Someone say freedom. freedom. So divine provision is your heritage in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Divine provision. Bible said in Psalm 1 3, so whatsoever you do, you will prosper. Because without your prosperity, you will lack. Without lack, you will steal. When you steal, you bring shame to the kingdom. Divine provision is your heritage in Christ. I decree right now, anyone whose heart is right with God, but cannot feed by the power in the mighty name of Jesus, everything needed to feed yourself, to feed your family, and to feed the people around you, receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Stand up, we have to pray a prayer before we go. It's very strong in me. Lord, henceforth, may I never look up to men to feed again. Henceforth, may I never look up to men to feed again. Henceforth, may I never look up to men to feed again. Henceforth, may I never look up to men to feed again. May I never look up to men to feed. May I never look up to men to feed. May I never look up to men to feed. May I never look up to men to feed. May I never look up to men to feed. Rabo shakata baba. Igeranto sembre kentalaya bada. England to shaba. Oh Lord, create way. Create way. Create way. Create way. I will not look up to the president, to the governor. To the Congress, to the Senate, to the government, I will not look up to men. I will not look up to wife. I will not look up to husband. I will not look up to children. I will not look up to father. I will not look up to mother. I will not look up to the boss. Anyone that wants to take the place of God in my life to feed, I know it's not going to happen. Lord, pro divine provision is my heritage in Christ. Divine provision is my heritage in Christ. I cannot steal because stealing brings shame to the kingdom. That does not glorify God. Lerusha brihanta la shadaba. Zelushun debe. Ruabake katasa dekete debe de yadaba. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. No this and no peace. God set you free from hunger. Take your seat. If you need to wait for government to feed, that means you are settled for crumbs. And the crumb is for people who are not part of the kingdom. The dogs. <clears throat> you know, until your understanding clicks and aligns to heaven, you will be thinking earth are doing you good. And with that is what right, well, that's what right now. If you don't know that what they are giving you, you are the owner, you will be thanking God on their behalf. <laughs> you, that you are the owner of a mansion. And because you have not come to that understanding, they employ you to be cutting grass. Somebody say, God forbid. God forbid. Jesus set free from guilt and shame. He set free from sicknesses. He set free from death. He set free from hunger. And, and the last one, 
is set free from nothing. As a believer, you are not permitted to be without something. You are not permitted to be, to be, with, to, to, to be without nothing. You are to have everything that you need, you must have. When you need one, you call for one, seven will show up. When you need money, money will show up. That is what Paul said. Hey, <laughs> my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. To Christ Jesus. God, can you imagine the wealth of heaven? And if you are a child of God, you should be with everything you need. Look for that scripture for me. Is it Luke 8, verse 3? He said, There are people who, three lady, they are meeting the need of Jesus. Ah, if Jesus' need can be met, they are standing by. When Jesus Christ said, I feel like eating in uh, Washington, D.C. tonight, somebody will just bring a, a private jet, boom, and go to the same restaurant, go to the same place, cook the food, and bring it. Eh? Look at it. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Many others. He provided. They provided for him from their substances. Can you imagine that? They were standing by. Take your seat. <coughs> Jesus no no permitted to beg. So henceforth, everything that makes your pocket to dry, that make your heart to dry, that push you to the world without knowing what to do next, you are not permitted to be like that again. In, Mark, in John chapter 6, verse 6, John chapter 6, verse 6, the Bible let us know that Jesus asked them, how can we feed these people? He said, he asked them because he himself know what to do. Somebody said, Jesus is in Christ. Jesus is in charge. Jesus is in charge. And because he said in John chapter 17, verse 18, and John chapter 20, verse 21, he said, as my living father have said to people, so sent are you. If Jesus is in charge, you are in charge of your life. You are in charge of your health. You are in charge of your marriage. You are in charge of your relationship. You are in charge of your job. Amen. You are in charge of your sense, the spiritual sensitivity. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. lift up your right hand and decree, I'm in charge. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. I'm in charge. In the mighty name of Jesus. And listen, when they, are, they run out of wine, and the wine, the pot of wine that is full of drink before, <laughs> run out. Somebody say nothing. But what they did at the beginning, that's what I'm telling you today. Don't live a life <coughs> without Jesus Christ. The Bible said in John chapter 2, at the beginning, he said they invited the mother of Jesus alone. Maybe Mary can cook. Maybe Mary, Mary is an event planner. I don't know why they invited her. But one thing they said, they said they invited Jesus too. Ah, may you never get involved in a project without Jesus' invitation. So the invitation of Christ, Jesus give them order. Fill the water pot with water. Just fill it with water. Take it, go and give it to the master of ceremony. You see? And their nothingness turned to something. Ah, may you never see shame Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May you never see shame Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So talking about these five freedom that Jesus Christ brought to you. That's why you need to understand John 8, 36, Colossians 1, 13, and John 10, 10. He come to give you life. He has rescued you from the darkness. And if he sets you free indeed, you are, in, you are free indeed. If he sets you free, you are free indeed. Tonight, let us round up with one thing. What is it? What are you supposed to do to embrace this freedom of Christ? Number one, which is the only one with number three, which is number one for today, is John 1, 14. Receive his person. Accept him. Receive him. <clears throat> Receive the principle of Jesus. Jesus, hard worker. Jesus, a network person. Jesus did not live his life by himself. He prayed overnight and gather these disciples to him and train them first before he send them out. Receive the person of Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 14, listen to the word of God. He said, the word came, 
the word became a man and lived among us. And we saw his divine greatness, the greatness that belonged to the only son of the, of the father. The word was full of grace and of truth. Stand up on your feet. Let me tell you something. Take it or leave it. Embrace it or eat it. Celebrate it, demote it. It's your choice. One thing I know, your freedom is only guaranteed in Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <clears throat> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Wherever you are around the world, are you watching America? You watching Nigeria? Wasn't it South America? You watching in Caribbean? You watching in Africa? You watching in, no matter where you in Arabian Gulf, no matter where you're watching, I want you to know, <clears throat> either life or right now, I want you to know the only way to your next level is what? Is to step out of crisis and step out of Christ. Step into Christ. Your next level is only guaranteed when you step out of crisis. You step out of Christ. I've said it before. Freedom that God created for you through Jesus. It is not to set you free. <coughs> into nothing. It is to set you free from nothing to something, from hell to heaven, and from the hand of devil to the hand of Christ. You must be under a covering. Which one? Tonight. But I come to tell you, the one that you are right now is not good enough. That is why you are still struggling. Come to Jesus. Is the author and the finisher of our faith. Come to Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Come to Jesus. He will set you free. His body is light. And his load, he has been, he has drop it off your, of your, of your neck. All you need to do is to say, Jesus, I come to you. Forgive me. If you are ready tonight, it's so simple. Say this word after me. After you lift up your left hand up and put your right hand on your chest and bow down your head and say this word after me. Lord Jesus, I'm all yours. I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose up again and might be justified. Right now, my sins are forgiven. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Right now, I begin to live according to the standard set by heaven through Christ Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. The freedom that God has prepared for you through Christ Jesus, receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. You have been set free today. You will never go back to the camp of the enemy again. In the mighty name of Jesus. The road that leads <coughs> back to hell is shut against you. The road that celebrates God in this kingdom is open to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank God we have our communion now. Amen. This communion is blessed. Turn to be the flesh and the blood of Jesus. As we take it right now, let it become the flesh and the blood of Jesus. Anyone around at home, wherever you are, your communion is not just something missed by a chemist in a lab. Anytime it is being prayed on pond, it becomes the blood and the flesh of Christ. As you do this to remind, you know, to remember the price that Christ has paid for us, it becomes the communion of freedom. Right now, no man will play you game again. Amen. They took it that night and they were set free. As you take it this night, you shall be free indeed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. This is blessed. Turn to be the flesh and the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Lift up your hand and worship the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the honor. Father, we give you all the adoration. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, for as many that take the communion tonight, let healing river begin to flow into your life. Amen. Let peace of the Lord flow into your life. And let the calmness to serve God for continuity in hope be your portion. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. It's offering time. <clears throat> it's offering time. Lift up your offering and make a declaration.
Tell God this is my offering of freedom. As you give this, may you never be in bondage again. In Jesus' mighty name. Remember, offering is not compulsory, but it's mandatory. What do I mean? Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Only those who are led are the children of God. <coughs> never give because anybody tells you to give because what happened? God leads you to. Because if you are not led by God, you'll be what? Compared by men. Lord, we are not here empty. Because emptiness equals emptiness. By this seed, change our story. Set us free from the bondage of nothing to something. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's cast our offering. If you're online and you are led, uh, palacechapel at gmail.com for zeal and for paper. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Receive the blessing. We're going to continue our Sunday teaching on uh, Sunday. For so and many people who have connected for these three days, I decree may you not know shame. Amen. I decree may you not be behind camera. Amen. I decree right now may everything in this world support you. Amen. May the morning support you. Amen. May the afternoon support you. Amen. May the evening support you. Amen. May the night support you. Amen. Everything that you have been looking up to that God has done, no devil will undo it. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Your body will never be will never be a sick body. Amen. Your mind will never be a sick mind. Amen. Your productivity will never be a sick one. Amen. You will act right. Amen. You will live right. Amen. You will live well. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You have been free by Christ today. You will never be in bondage of hell tomorrow. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And we say, surely... God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I'm stepping up in Jesus' name. <coughs> God has given us the command. Congratulations. Amen. In Jesus' name. Please, before we greet ourselves, if you are watching right now, Facebook and YouTube, try to click, share your comments, share with people, and comment below. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Give somebody a knife and say, I am free in Christ. I am free indeed.